Hello, so today we're gonna to be talking about the Growth Strategy Planner and I'm gonna go through the layout for you guys and help you understand kind of why things are there. Uh, so the first part here is fairly self-explanatory, but as we get into the growth goals, this is really going to be the heart and the root of this whole document. And to simplify things, because there's so many different goals that you can create, and we'll get into that a little bit more specifically in a moment, we really simplify it down into four primary goals. More visibility, more engagement, more conversions, and more upselling or retention. And then within these, there's a lot that we can do, but really it takes a lot of resources to move in this direction. So we really recommend focusing on one goal, getting to where you're hoping to go or moving along that path towards achieving that goal. Uh, of course, tracking it with data, we'll get into that as well. And then moving on to a new goal afterwards. So, you know, maybe you spend one quarter, we just spent the last quarter working on visibility and next quarter we're moving into engagement so that we can capitalize on the visibility that we basically have already built. Uh, and just to break these down a little bit more, so more visibility is new eyes on your thing. So it is the first time somebody interacts with your brand and hopefully they come out of it understanding who you are and what problem you solve for it to be successful. More engagement is really about more people interacting of their own volition, but generally for free with your brand. So often engaging with content that you're producing like a blog or a podcast. More conversions is our uh, more commitments of time or money. So there can be small conversions and big conversions like selling something, but these all fall in the category of making a commitment. And then finally, more upselling or retention. This is someone who has already purchased from you, is already a customer in some way. And we're looking for ways at this point to help them engage deeper or help them really be loyal and stick on longer, especially if they're doing some sort of ongoing service. Then we get into the dashboard. So this is where we take the goal and we turn it into tangible action. And this is meant to be very simple, very focused for a reason. Uh, and it really just goes into, the goal goes into the current priority. So you really wanna be setting, I recommend starting with no more than one or two current priorities total. Uh, depending on how many resources, how much resources you have, how much time you're putting into this. But unless you have someone basically whose full-time job is running this, uh, I would recommend even just starting with one current priority. And I cannot emphasize enough the importance of SMART goals. So specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. That means they have a deadline. So this is put together this way for a reason, right? We want to have a metric-based SMART goal as the current priority for something that we're going to do. Usually, you know, we use quarters, you can use whatever time frame works well for you. And then the goal or the metric is the measurable that helps you understand how to get there. From there, we go into the status, color-coded, super easy. The next action, because that's really what matters. You wanna know who is taking action, when is that going to happen? Who is responsible for it? You know, you can list some of the next actions coming up, but since you want to be looking at this regularly, this will keep you accountable to the very next thing. Who are you waiting for, for something to move forward? And then of course notes, because as you're moving through this, I strongly recommend that you leave the issues in the issue section in the sense that, of course, you want to be coming up with issues, generating issues as you see what's working, what's not, how are your metrics doing, etc. But really, the time when you're looking at it is not necessarily the time to solve. We'll get into that in a little bit because uh, you want to be able to uh, prioritize your issues so that you're always tackling the most important ones. All right, as we move down, next we have the overall timeline. Uh, and the timeline in some versions of this, to be honest, I selfishly like it better at the top. So I am gonna be putting it at the top here, but this really just is a bird's eye view of what's happening. Uh, this is the focus in showing you what's going on. This is looking ahead at what's gonna be going on in the near future. Next, we get into the action items, finished actions and topics, content wish list, and issues. So again, these all have, they're all here for a reason. The action items is as you're tackling issues and topics and digging into things, just making sure that you understand who is going to be doing what, when. Uh, if this is something that you're working on for clients, often this is for the client. Uh, you can track additional tasks for them that are not specifically part of a current priority and goal. Finished actions and topics. I just love being able to look back and celebrate what you've accomplished already. Because when you're looking at the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, sometimes it's important to step back and be like, wow, we actually have gotten a lot done and we've come a long way from where we started. Also, of course, proving results, never a bad thing. 
And last but not least, we have the content wish list and issues. And uh, these really are not the little things on here. I love these parts. The content wish list is where you or a client or other people on your team can just go crazy, add in all the ideas that they want. And we carefully keep this separate from the goals and the current priorities and the metrics because these are our menu for when we're ready for the next thing, right? We want to keep the main thing, the main thing, and make sure that we're moving along and make a conscious decision either to let it go or to say we've achieved our goals. Great. We're moving on to something else, but it's still important to dream, to have those visions, to have those ideas. So this is where that goes. And then the issues list, as we've already discussed, what makes the issues list effective is the fact that it too can be a dumping ground for all the issues. It's really important to separate the problems from the problem solving and create great habits around both. So if you're creating great habits around identifying problems, then you don't have to be bogged down or being afraid of, oh my God, how am I going to solve this? Because when you identify the issue, you just put it on the list and then you set time aside to go through issues, prioritize them in order of the most urgent and most important important and then uh, basically solve as much as you can within the period of time and that keeps you always focused on the most important things and continually making progress forward anyway we'll be diving more into the growth strategy planner and other videos in the meantime i hope this helped you and i hope you have a great rest of your day